What's up, guys? What's up, Nate? Uh, hold on one second. Let me bring you in, Nate. Uh, Trying to figure out how to flip this thing out. What's up, guys? What's up, Jason? What's up, Eric? Uh, what's up, Nate? What's on, bud? No much. Hold on one second. Let me see what this at the door. But you guys, uh, while I check this door, please share share this post. Uh, we want to get in as many groups as possible. What's up, Laura? I'll be right back. What's up, Blake? What's up, Haywood? What's up, Jason? What's up, Eric? What's up, everybody? Uh, please share this uh, share this live. We're trying to get it to uh, as many groups as possible. Uh, I'm high. Basically, I'm Hakeem Brimer, Rogue Bully Science. That's Nate, uh, owner and um, chief mind behind Origins Five and One Supplement. Uh, and what we're going to be talking today about is uh, what Nate, they call it biomarkers. It's something I recently have learned about, uh, you know, hanging out with Nate and just, you know, learning from him and Blake. Uh, and we wanted to speak to you guys more on what biomarkers are and kind of educate our community on what they are. Because I, you know, I recently just found out what they are. So I'm going to let Nate take over and kind of speak on it. Yeah, there's a, there's a number of definitions for what biomarkers are. Um, just depends on which field you're in, um, which conversation you're even in on what is or is not a biomarker. Um, and a very high level is that a biomarker is a biological signal that you can measure. Um, that's putting it very, very generally. Um, depending on which field of science you're in, you know, we have a different category of biomarkers because, you know, things that are commonplace like, um, you know, uh, you know, creatinine levels, bun levels, uh, uh, glucose levels. I mean, those are those are markers that we can read in blood. We you check those on a chemistry panel. So we really don't talk about, at least I don't talk about chemistry panel markers um, as a biomarker. So I, I have a different definition on the biomarkers, which are things that aren't usually uh, measured. So things like uh, a good example mm. is uh, glucagon. Well, that's a marker. That's a glucagon is involved with insulin and metabolism. And it's something that you don't readily measure. Um, these are other, so there's a host, a host of other markers floating around in your blood that you could pull and pull a blood sample out, test them, and actually measure uh, changes in the body. So if you're talking in, in this case with dogs, if you're feeding something and you're ever wondering what is going on with the dog, well, you can feed them for a period of time uh, or pull blood beforehand, test what you're looking for feed it to them for, you know, one day all the way up to 30 days or more and pull blood and see what, are, what, what changes are you seeing in those markers that relate to the body. So it's biomarkers too aren't a very, they're not, um, they are specific, but they're not specific as in, uh, you know, we put something into the dog and this changes and it, it's not your traditional science pathway where you're looking at like, you know, you know, an immune modulator or like IL-6 or, you know, TNF-alpha, so, things like that, that are going to have a very specific pathway. We're not looking on that. A biomarker is more systems level. So it's more higher level, but it goes down below just your traditional blood chemistry. So it uh, gives you a little more insight of what's going on. So biomarkers are basically like um, if you have a product or something you're trying to test out in, um, in a, a living thing, this kind of lets you know if whatever you're trying to find out is working or not is that what they are like what's a simple way of, of describing a biomarker for like the everyday person uh like that, that's what i kind of got from it i'm sorry say it one more time what i got from uh what a biomarker is is basically a simple it's a way to um to to um if you're trying to if you're doing research on something on a, leave, a living animal or a living thing, what a biomarker does is basically lets you know if what you're looking for is actually working or whatever you're doing is actually, you know, it keeps, it lets you know what's, if, if it's working or not. That's what I kind of got from it. Yeah, so 
uh, in the case of, you know, we have a, you know, your, your diet is going to impact your biomarkers. It's going to impact a lot more, but biomarkers, you can actually measure certain biomarkers and tell if your diet is having an impact, a positive or negative impact on, on your, on your body as a system. So, um, you know, insulin sensitivity is we measure that when you're, when you go through an insulin sensitivity study, when you're looking at, you know, are you actually producing insulin? Are you responding to insulin? Are you becoming sensitive or insensitive to insulin? So you can actually take a food in, if you're in the hospital, uh, in a study like that, they will check your insulin response. And so they will fast you for, you know, up to 12 hours and then they'll, uh, you know, nothing but just water. And then they'll give you this sugary little drink. And they'll have pulled blood way uh, multiple times beforehand. And then they'll see how quickly your insulin levels rise, how glucagon uh, goes down. Glucagon is another insulin is another biomarker. And then you'll see how quickly your body will clear uh, in the bloodstream insulin uh, or glucose in this case would be converted to glucose. And you will see how fast your body can clear glucose. So if, you know, like if you're diabetic or have, uh, you know, one or two, you're going to have some other problems with that as well. And that in, in the same pathway, not that this is going to be the same. So how is it, um, how do, how is it um, for us in the, in the dog community or the bully community, why is it important for us to kind of know what this is or know what this is when it comes out to products, products we use with our dogs? Yeah. So why it's important for the dog community specifically is that to our knowledge, we may be the only company actually looking at the changes in biomarkers in dogs and that we can actually positively impact on the positive side uh, biomarker regulation in the animals. So when you're putting something into a dog and you're like, is this having a good effect or a bad effect? We can actually measure those. Um, we as Rogue don't uh, do, the, do the testing. We have that sent by a very specialized uh, uh, clinic out in Houston, actually, near you, that does these biomarker testing. So for the study, um, so when you're adding something in the dog, you can actually see, we can actually tell that our supplement is actually having a positive impact, not just on body weight or the, the total blood counts uh, that Jason might be referring to. But we're looking at, you know, in addition to all the blood chemistries, um, we're actually looking at a lot of um, insulin and glucagon. Uh, looking at glucose, we're looking at um, OxM, which is a satiety signaling hormone um, that gets released and communicates directly to the brain to say, hey, we got food down here. Um, we're, we're good to go. So it controls uh, hunger and satiety. Uh, we're looking at reproduction markers like uh, AMH, which is also studied. It's well, um, it's used a lot in humans, especially in, in female reproduction uh, testing. So uh, I, which is what we're going to talk about today a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So with Origins 5-in-1 Supplement, what, um, with the biomarkers, what have you guys, what have you found out through your research um, that Origins 5-in-1, how Origins 5-in-1 Supplement affects a dog's overall system? Yeah, so doing this kind of, uh, this kind of work, which we did not pay for and we did not sequester, it was uh, voluntarily, we, we voluntarily uh, entered into it, um, it was proposed to us and we did not pay for anything. Um, all we did was supply uh, origins and said, follow the directions. And they sent us back the data, um, which took a little bit yeah, because it's free. So we're not on anybody's priority list, but they were interested to see how much we can impact. So we looked at a lot of biomarkers, um, mainly around insulin and metabolism, or right around metabolism. So we did look at insulin, which is a big uh, interest in the human world as well. But we also looked at uh, a number of other ones related to reproduction um, inflammation, uh, in addition to the blood chemistry, all the blood chemistries we ran, we ran chem 10 panels. So we looked at 10 targets in the blood and then we also monitored weight. Nice. And what was, we were just speaking about, um, the recent one, um, you just got our results for, which had to do with reproduction. Um, so what did we find out based on those results that, uh, Origin 5 and 1 does? Or increases or decreases. Or yeah, whatever. this is actually a really good one, Hakeem, because um, in addition to being probably one of the only companies actually, you know, looking at dog health and how our product actually directly impacts the health of an animal on a level other than some subjective scale of one to ten, how does my dog's coat look? This is what we wanted to find out because we've we've been we've documented it through other uh, issues that we've fixed in the past, so it's been battle tested in the field in real life scenario. So we put it into this, uh, we agreed to come into the study, which was a very 
unusual study because none of the dogs, this was in a controlled setting. This was a veterinarian um, that chose the dogs. All the dogs in the study had pre-existing health issues. So we were going to make some big changes in this dog and, or in these dogs, and it was going to be a real world scenario. So what we found out specifically um, that we talk about is with, with, in regards to reproduction, right, is, yeah, yes, we can gain weight. We can put weight on a dog. We can also take weight off of a dog that needs to lose weight. So it'd be uh, gaining positive weight, lean mass, and losing negative weight, which would be fat. Uh, part of what we're doing is uh, that we're kind of known for in certain circles is our reproduction work with this product. So what we were able to look at is in female uh, animals, both human and, and uh, canine, uh, AMH, anti-mullerian hormone, um, is a biomarker that we can measure. So this signal for AMH is very consistent, which means it's, um, it's released by unfertilized, uh, unfertilized eggs that are hanging out in the ovaries. And the number of eggs is directly proportional to the signal that we see in the blood. So if you have a lot of eggs, the signal should be high per, per, in relation to that dog. And then as they get older, uh, it'll decrease on, on, a, on a timeline. The timeline decrease is associated with because, well, dogs cycle twice a year. Eggs. They're going to release eggs. Mm -hmm. Whether they get fertilized or not is a different situation, but they're losing eggs each time they cycle. So that's also the reason for the progression of downwards on the signal over the, the lifetime of, the, of a female. Um, this is also correlated with human and canines as well. So what we were able to do is that um, we were directly impacted the signal on the positive side of AMH in the dogs in the study. So we took the blood beforehand, measured that biomarker, AMH, um, before they started origins. And then 30 days later, we measured it again. Same conditions, fasted blood draws. So it, it, food is not going to impact AMH markers either way but it will affect a lot of other markers so fasted blood before fasted blood after and we saw um, on one dog uh, one intact female there was a 54 percent improvement in that signal 54 percent improvement in an amh uh, biomarker uh, regulation it it went up and then the we had a the other intact female had a 12 percent increase so here actually i'll, I'll we can show that to you right there why do you think there was a difference between the two females? So both had both got origins or one that got origins? I'll show it again here in a second. Uh, no, all, all dogs. There was 10 dogs in the study. We had five females, five males. Again, I had no control over it. It was a real world scenario. So in a vet practice, uh, you're going to get a mix between um, intact animals and altered animals. So I had no decision on that. So out of all the females, two of them were intact. The other three were were fixed so um so i'll show you that again a little bit a little bit pulled back so you see these you have this dog and this dog and this female okay so there's, no so there's a five dog those, those three without any color to them those those are the females not intact those are the females that have been fixed they have fixed okay they've had the reproduction system removed there is no there's no eggs in them anymore so they are not producing any amh biomarker so, again, we're one of the few that have actually been able to do the dog work um, on, on AMH, even in dogs. We partnered with one of the, the experts in AMH testing in the human world, which is there in Houston. Um, we partnered with them to do a lot of this work. And we were able to, uh, to, to get some more dog data because there's very little of it out there. And so we're already showing that the AMH response in dogs and humans are, are directly proportional. They're conserved across the species which is also a good thing because when, you talk, when you're talking about reproduction rates, right, when you're having reproduction problems or you have <clears throat> maybe smaller litter sizes, well, how, how good is that female cycling? How many eggs is she releasing per cycle? Um, whether they get fertilized and adhere and carry the term is a different issue as well, but all of it's re revolved around health, the quality of the health of the animal. You improve the health of the animal, the whole system of the dog is going to do better. It's going to operate better. It's going to do its job that it's genetically designed to do. Over the lifetime, if it's on a bad quality diet or you're putting things in there that will negatively impact the animal, you're going to have negative impacts on the biomarkers, which is going to show you that you're having a negative impact on the animal. So <clears throat> one, of this, one of the big things out of the study was also to prove empirically with real data 
that Origins does not cause any real pro does not cause any problems to dogs. It is not a negative add to dogs. In fact, it's a very big positive. Um, so we already have a safety study that shows that this does not negatively impact the animal or the organ functions. <clears throat> Uh, and we've shown more than that we actually do. We do more than that. So basically what Nate is saying is based on scientific research that was done, that was not controlled by rogue pet science, rogue bully science was done by an outside agency with five dogs, three dogs that were fixed, three, five females, three that were fixed and two that were intact, um, that it were put on origin 30 days later after using the biomarkers to test their blood, they were able to see that these two females that were intact were in a position to produce more eggs. Now, I'm trying to put it in a simple, a simple way for people to understand which basically what we're talking about. So what we're saying is, it's scientifically proven by an outside agency that Origins 5-in-1 gives your female a better chance of producing more eggs, which gives her a better chance of producing puppies or having healthy litter. Um, I have always looked at Origins, kind of what you said is, to me, what I've noticed with our personal dogs is by introducing Origins 5 and 1 into their life, you overall improve the dog's health overall. And it goes back to what Nate says, which is once you improve the overall dog's health, whatever that dog is meant to do physically, it's going to improve. And it makes sense in what you're saying in regards to the reproduction uh, females and reproduction um, system being better. So this is something, this is not something people are just, we're just making up. This is something that's scientifically proven by an outside agency that Nate has worked with that tests biomarkers. And what I find interesting about the biomarkers is, um, I know I remember one time Blake was telling me they also use it for humans. I, I never heard about it till I met you guys and started talking, you know, learning about it. So, you know, it's a lot of products we see within the bully community and, and the, especially in the bully community that we all try and nobody really knows what's behind it. There's no research behind it. Uh, and I wanted to use today as a, a good example for Nate to kind of edu educate us on what biomarkers are and just kind of shows that the responsibility held on our end at Rogue Bully Science and Rogue Pet Science that we're not just putting a product out there that's not tested, that's not tested to do what we say it's going to do. So, if you guys have any questions while we're on here, also let us know. He says, uh, Otoro said, does it help males too? Yeah, I saw that. And breathing. So, the, uh, yes, this is used a lot in the human world for reproduction. So, if, if you're having reproduction problems and you can't conceive, well, this is one of the go-to markers that they test for. Um, they test for it at racehorses as well because racehorses have a notorious problem for reproduction as well. So, by understanding what the animal's base AMH level is, then you can use it as a starting point to understand that, okay, if I'm going to change the diet, how does this impact the signal on reproduction? If I add this supplement one at a time, how does that change? And ultimately, you want to bump it up. That way, if it's too low <clears throat> of an AMH level in a female, you're going to have reproduction problems. Uh, one, the animal won't cycle nearly as well maybe she cycles in regularly or is not consistently cycling on the same schedule or she may skip one. So um, I saw a, a Facebook live um, from another group that talked about um, bringing females in to a new kennel setup. They didn't cycle for almost a whole year before they actually cycled uh, normally where they can actually breed to them. So a number of things uh, are an insult onto the body and the way it functions. So uh, that is one of them. Um, so being able to increase that signal means that they're going to be able to cycle more frequently or more, you know, thoroughly, regularly, and they have the potential to release more eggs, which is going to give you the highest potential of actually having uh, a good litter size. Uh, it, this is not going to artificially, uh, you know, this ain't going to artificially increase your litter sizes, folks. This is not going to, you know, you're not going to have five, to eight, maybe 10 pups, and all of a sudden you're going to have 20. No, <laughs> this is not that kind. This is not a, a pharmaceutical synthetic kind of issue. This is a whole full food gut health systems approach that's just going to increase the optimization of the dog. So your dog is going to be better, healthy, or is going to be healthier. That means they're going to just do better, and they're just going to they're going to reproduce and cycle at their oh, true man. genetic potential, not on some bait, uh, lower level of efficiency. And 
What? The, oh, go ahead, Nate. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. To answer Arturo's question, um, Origins will help your mail. Um, uh, uh, Chris James was on. Um, was it last weekend? And last week Sunday, yeah. yeah. Chris Bully the kid. And some other folks, uh, both that I was directly involved, and other breeders out there have seen an increase in the semen count of the male. So that again goes to the quality of health of the animal. You're going to increase your semen quantity and motility and your production. All these factors are are measurable, and you can measure them, but you just have to you know feed and then test before, test after to see that. Now, AMH is not used in males, uh, Arturo. Uh, it's, it's, this, it's an embryonic issue. So just like humans, dogs are all female, technically, uh, at a certain point in development until you get that first testosterone bath and the receptors pick up on the testosterone and it converts and tells you, hey, we're going to be males and you're going to be females. So what we have is an a, is a embryonic artifact with males. So one, one result that we can take away from that is that AMH in females and dogs, when you test it, is a direct correlation to reproduction outcome of the animal, meaning that you can determine how well this female, if you monitor it over time, you can tell if a female is going to stay in production longer and be able to reproduce more, uh, which is the one to two year, you know, we claim that we could probably add one to two years of quality breeding life onto a female in the bully breed. Um, we, if you're measuring AMH levels, uh, the lab that's going to measure it for you, they could, you could see how that dec uh, the decline is going, or if something changed and you have a sharp decline, then you know something else has been uh, going on. Uh, so let me show you the male data because it's, it's, very, it's very cut and dry. So, so what you see is, and I'll zoom in on one, we have male and female, I'm sorry, male intact and male that have been fixed. So mm -hmm. intact male, intact male, intact male, these two guys have been fixed. So what, what is used in some, um, I think some legal cases is AMH has been used to show that the animal was fixed, you know, proven that the animal was actually uh, altered and no longer uh, could reproduce. And so that is what AMH is good for. If there was ever a question of, hey, vet, you know, you fixed my dog, but man, my female turned up pregnant. We had his testicles removed. What's going on? I thought he was fixed. You can run an AMH test and determine uh, was the dog fixed or not. You know, it's a legal thing. You can prove um, for that as well. So it's a very interesting, it's a very interesting time right now and being able to, to give more to the body of evidence out there of what, um, what we can do to impact uh, canine health that can be directly related and uh, rolled over into the human side as well. Um, this data will be, uh, be worked up into a more formal uh, report for everybody, but also we will be presenting it at other conferences um, on canine health as well, because we are one of the few that have actually verified that we can, uh, it, it's not that can we measure it, we can easily measure it, that's not a problem, it's how do you impact it, how can you improve it naturally and holistically is an even bigger interest out there uh, in the health world, so we're the only we may be the only company out there, definitely the only pet uh, science-based company to actually make the, and show this improvement. Nice, nice. And again, just to put this out there, we're not saying with Origins, your fixed male <laughs> is guaranteed. We're not saying that. We're not saying your fixed female is going to have a litter. We're not saying your fixed male is going to produce a litter now. What we're saying is if you have a, a, a male or female that's intact, um, Origins 5 and 1 gives your dog the best possible chance to do its best and what you're trying to get out of it by feeding it, by adding it to its diet. Um, uh, let me see. What's the next thing I want to talk about is, um, so earlier this week, we, you know, it was a little, uh, you know what I want to speak about. It was a little, uh, I don't want to say internet back and forth between Rogue Bully Science and another company um, that's out there. And a lot of things were thrown out there that, you know, we know is not legit. Uh, I'm not going to say the company's name. Um, I'm not going to say that, again, this is, this is not a thing to go against anybody. What we're trying to do with this product, and when I approach Nate and Blake to bring it to the bully community, is we're trying to, trying to um, make the dogs healthier. Uh, if you looked at the live I spoke, when I spoke to Dave Wilson yesterday, 
when the American Bully was first created, American Bully was a straight wild dog. The whole point of it was to bring it out and people stop in their tracks. What is that? That was the way it was introduced to all of us. Um, now the American Bully is becoming a worldwide phenomenon. But the thing is, as we grow, um, we're getting new, newer people learning about our dogs, Nate, Blake, it's, you know, other people that learn about our dogs. And the thing about our dogs is our dogs are wild. We love them. But realistically, do we, do we really know what's going on inside of our dogs health wise? So when I heard about this product and I heard about how I felt like it could be very beneficial to the bully community, I, I felt like we had to bring it in. So when it goes down to these other companies out there, when we when, when a comparison is put out there, it's not to we're not trying to demean anybody. It's just to show the facts. It's facts. So what I wanted Nate to kind of speak on, uh, we're not going to mention the company's name, but the company kind of put some information out there. Um, and I just wanted to, and it, it's going against something that you, your heart, you put your heart and effort into it. So I want you to kind of speak on what, you know, what they put out there, how legit, or is that factual what they're saying? Oh, okay. Well, I don't, I don't negatively bash companies because, you know, product is a product. It has, it was, put out there for a purpose it has a purpose it does things it's it's just going to do it's it's going to do what it's going to do and ultimately at the end of the day it doesn't matter what you say what i say um whether we can prove it or not um we can prove everything that we do say happens we actually put the time to prove that it actually does work that way not just make a a broad claim of oh well science says this and science says that science says a lot of things and there's a lot of bad science out there there's a lot of corrupted, sponsored research that pushes it in a direction for a favorable outcome. What's more powerful about our data is that we did not have any control over it. It was put out there. We didn't pay for it. It wasn't even on our timeline. And uh, one vet did the study, recruited the folks, sent the, the blood off to IDEX, which is the world leader in companion animal diagnostic testing for blood chemistries. Um, and another lab in Houston, who's a DVM PhD, uh, did all the biomarker. He's world famous in that as well. And they have a whole company based around a human version of the test. And we've been uh, fortunate enough to have connected with him early on to be to help them gather more dog data, which is something we're going to bring as well to the ABKC folks that kind of help build up this, uh, this data bank of information specifically on the bully breeds of what's there. So I'm not going to bash anything and it's not my place to do that. Um, I just like to talk real real science and how is it applied, you know, correctly. Um, in that case, in that chart that I did see was, was weight gain and mass building on that. Well, origins, as you've seen, and as everybody else who's using it right now, definitely see that the dogs are maintaining weight better. Um, it's a lean mass. It's a quality mass of muscle mass. They're, they're heavier, um, but they're performing just as good or better than they were before. And they are either using the same amount of food or using, in your case, less amount of, of primary diet with a little bit of origins put in there. And so um, let me show you, I, I actually printed this off, not knowing that we were gonna talk about this, but um, I'm glad I did. Um, so we took all the weight from the speed study as well, because we looked at so many factors, which is why it's not a traditional uh, research paper. We, it's a real field guide of real results that you're gonna experience as a, as a user of the product. So, um, so on this graph, I broke apart male and females um, that were in the study and showed uh, which dogs gained weight. Um, there's a few dogs that lost, uh, that lost a little bit of weight, and there was one dog that had no weight change. So in this study, all these dogs, their, mod their diet was unmodified. They were all on dry food. I don't know which ones, so don't ask. Um, it's, not, it's not the point of the study. I didn't care about which dry food they were feeding. They were feeding a dry food. They made no changes in the amount of dry food they were feeding each day. All they did was follow the bag instructions, and pretty much all of them were on a quarter cup a day. So most dogs fall into a quarter cup of origins a day. So, so that's what they did. And uh, so basically, so I'll show you the, the results here. So of the males, which is the, uh, I'm sorry, the females, this is the females. 40% of the females gained weight and not as you can see, it's not a huge amount of weight. They gained a little bit of lean mass over 30 days. Um, half, uh, so two of them gained weight, two of them lost a little bit of weight and one of them had no change. So this very last one, they had no change. So, 
So half the females gained a little bit of weight and uh, uh, so, so it's a very interesting because I know the question is going to come up whether they were fixed or unfixed, uh, which ones gained weight. And actually, <clears throat> one of the fixed females uh, lost a little bit of weight, like one pound. Um, one of the intact females lost a little bit of weight. So that was the two that lost weight. One intact, well, so one, one intact female and one fixed female lost a little bit of weight. And then one fixed female and the other intact female um, uh, had uh, gained a little bit of weight. And then one of the intact females had, had no change in weight. So again, that's only five, so 40%, 40%, basically two dogs gained, two dogs lost a little bit of weight, and one had no change. On the male side, which is very interesting to, to pull the, the genders apart. So on the male side, 80% of the males gained on an average 2.2 pounds in 30 days of lean mass. Wow. And the, wow. and the other 20%, which is one in this case, um, yeah, one of the males lost a little bit of weight. So, so why, why on the male and the female group did they lose weight instead of because we're like, oh, you guys gain, you know, guys say that you're going to gain weight on these dogs. Well, remember, this is a real world scenario and not every dog is healthy. And this because these were these were real dogs, real pet dogs, and they were all pets. Yeah, so I'm, pet I get that. Person, so. And, out of, and out of, no, go ahead, man. Yeah, no worries. And out of the out of the dogs that were um, cause, so these are real life dogs. These are pet dogs at a normal practice out in South Carolina. And the, the dogs that needed to lose uh, the dogs that lost weight actually needed to lose weight as that was the owner's concern. So specifically of the, of the two females that, that lost weight, one of them was an overweight lab. So this was a dog on a special, you know, overweight formula prescription, you know, prescription food. And this is a dog whose history of reducing the food down more and more and the dog's not losing any weight. So here we are, we're adding calories, real calories to the dog and in 30 days, we actually helped that dog lose um, almost five pounds in 30 days. So here's a dog who's historically is overweight, needs to lose weight, trying all the foods, trying all these things, and it's not losing any weight. And now we just add origin with a full systems approach that we use in the product, does its job, works splendidly, and the dog lost weight, and the owner is very, very happy that the dog was able to lose weight. Um, and that's the same case for the other, the other, the other few animals that, that lost a little bit of weight. They kind of needed to lose a little bit of extra weight because um, you give them good nutrition. The body's going to do its do its job. It's going to you know it's going to put it to use. It could function better, right? Um, I, also, very interestingly, in a few of the dogs, one was a German. Um, I'm sorry, one was a German Short Hair Pointer. One was an Irish Setter, and these are dogs that needed to gain weight. They were showing a little too much rib, and they needed to actually get a little more coverage on them and they needed to gain weight. Well, those dogs did gain weight. Um, they gained an average of about 2.2 pounds, uh, collectively 2.2 pounds. One gained a little bit more, one gained a little bit less and averaged out to about 2.2 pounds gained. So here it is, a dog, a high, you know, bird dog. These are hunting, these two dogs were hunting dogs that needed to gain a little bit extra weight. They're a little bit leaner than normal. Irish setters are also notorious for not wanting to eat. And now they're all eating consistently. Uh, they're loving their food. It's gone in, It's gone very quickly. And then they're actually gaining a little bit of weight. And the longer they're on it, they'll gain a little bit more weight too. But it'll be slow weight. You know, it's lean weight. It's going to take a little bit of time to put on. I think the great thing about, um, you know, everything Nate is saying is that there's research behind this. Um, he's showing you stats, research done, done by outside source. Um, this is not something we're just throwing out there and saying, oh, we can make your dog gain more weight. We can make your dog um, have a better chance of producing more eggs. We can make your dog healthier. There's actually facts and science behind it. Um, you know, one thing that lacks sometimes in the bully community is actually facts. People say a lot of stuff, but they truly have the stats and the research behind it to back what they're saying. So um, Origins 5 and 1, I personally know is legit. Um, you know, the more I learn, the more I, I, I look into it, I learn great things about it. So, I mean, you know, 
these talks we have on Sunday um, is to show people, um, you know, what how great this would be to add to your to your uh, to your program or your your dogs, your pet. Um, we have numerous of people that are on this live right now that have switched over and started using, using the Origins 5-in-1 um, supplement. Um, you know, if you guys are interested, RogueBullyScience.com has more information. You can order it on there. Um, Nate, is there anything you would like to add as we go on? Uh, yeah, I see a couple questions about um, females. Can can pregnant females take it? Is there a good time to start? Yeah. Um, absolutely. Real nutrition and things that are safe have no age limit to them. Um, we've had other posts about, you know, raising puppies on it. Um, you can raise puppies on it. You can wean them onto it. And uh, it's highly recommended that you, you wean on with origins. Uh, the sooner the mom takes it and transfers nice. the milk quality of milk that you're going to get out of it, you're going to raise healthier, hardier puppies. And you're leaving genetic potential on the table. If you're not giving it to a young, develop, uh, rapidly developing dog, you're, you're leaving true genetic potential on the table, but you're also risking health because we can actually impact the total health of the animal by developing the immune system, by diversifying the gut uh, environment and more favorable to the animal, you're gonna able to program the health of the animal for almost the lifetime of the animal. So there'll be a less sensitive dog. But on the pregnant female side, yeah, the sooner the better. And the recommendation is about double the dose. So, um, cause a pregnant female is also growing multiple um, embryos. So they're gonna need a little bit extra. Um, the, the research into real fish oil, like wild, complete, whole wild fish oil, which is in origins, um, is actually all the good stuff that goes to embryo, uh, uh, you know, development, uh, especially on the brain side for a young, uh, for a, a, a developing embryo, but also for the attachment to the, to the uterine horn linings as well. The attachment is very important for an embryo if it's going to carry to term. So um, all these factors roll over on what science says, and then we also show it because... Um, it's, takes, it's going to take a while to show that we've been able to increase the, the average level of litter sizes by one or so pup or even extend the life of a breeding female. But if we can turn an old sterile dog who was not cycling, who was intact, but stopped cycling years ago, if they can come back in the season and start cycling again and breed and carry naturally and, and wean and uh, whelp and wean naturally, the proof is in the pudding on that side. Um, it's not anecdotal. We've done it several times, so... Dylan Jen Ron, I'm not sure if I pronounced, just said, oh, just had my largest litter Friday, 10 healthy English bulldog puppies. I contribute a huge part of this to Origins. So just speaking on what you just spoke on, here's a, a real, real live situation, real person made a comment saying they just had 10 healthy English bulldog puppies, their largest litter to date, and they, they feel Origins had a big part of them getting that result. So that just feeds into what you just said. That's that's a lot of puppies for an English bulldog. Uh, I'm not experienced. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I'm not very experienced with it. I don't know if Laura Laura uh, Sepulva, uh, um, Sepulveda is here. Uh, maybe she can comment. I don't know what the average litter size is for English bulldog, but for a C-section dog, um, that's a lot. Ten of them. That's a lot. lot of puppies to carry <laughs> um, in a little package. Clay Southern says, "How would you say your product helps with skin issues?" Oh, it's directly impacted. That's, I can't stop the skin and coat from getting better, guys. Origins is going to make the skin and coat better. I can't stop it. Um, it's one of those nice secondary benefits uh, to uh, gut health because skin and coat quality is directly, directly connected to the quality of the gut health environment in the dog. So you improve that, you're going to improve the skin and coat. Um, the quality of the ingredients and then our systems approach is going to change that in the positive balance in favor of the dog. And then the dog's body is going to be able to take over and it's just going to be a, a very big positive snowball, which is very hard to, to create um, in any animal species. Oops. Say average for English bulldog litter is six. So for him, for him or her, I'm not, I'm sorry. I don't know if it's a male or female, but for them to have 10 English bulldog puppies, that's a lot. And, you know, he, he's saying, he, she's saying they credit a lot of that to them adding the origins five and one to their dog's diet. And that's, that's great to hear. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Laura, Laura, I believe is up in Michigan and she says that the average yeah. her size was six. And then, uh, I'm going to botch the name. He said his average litter size two over and he's in, I think Florida is said it was six as well. Um, I know some other English bulldog breeders that have been long-term in it. That'd be interesting to find out from them what their average litter size was. 
Nice, nice. Um, let me see. Hold on one second. I'm responding back to Dima. So Dima, Dima's in Chicago area. Dima, I have we have some on the ground in Chicago. Um, I'll message you later. Um, you can get it from um, Able in Chicago, and if, if you can't make it to Able, you can order some off the website. Uh, what I want to kind of do now is kind of show people uh, some, you know, I want to speak about on the yak stick. So I want to kind of show people the yak stick. And as I showed them the yak stick, I wanted you kind of, kind of, you know, tell them more about the yak stick and how, like, what's the benefit of the yak stick. So I'm going to flip it over so people can see what it is. So this is what we call the yak stick right here. So this is a five pack yak stick and you also can get them individually. Yep. And it comes in this too, if you wanted that. <laughs> we we only have a few of those left, them. though. <laughs> those ammo cans are very okay. limited supply. <laughs> Angelo, um, which is a, a, a local affiliate here in North Houston, is his dogs love this. So I wanted while while I had Nate on here, I wanted Nate to just speak a little bit more um, and tell us a little bit about the yak stick. Yeah, so we came across these um, through a connection over in Nepal. And once I found out about them, I was completely amazed that this is a very appropriate thing to be giving a dog um, if you're going to give them something other than a raw bone, right? So you'll never hear me say uh, there's anything better than raw uh, right now. <laughs> um, but the, these are a great alternative to raw bones. These aren't something you give them every day. It's like once a week, once every other week kind of deal. Um, so what it is, is actually it's very uh, important that this is a uh, yak milk. And it's a little bit of cow milk, but it's not from U.S. It's from Nepal, which means the A2 genetics, which is the confirmation of the protein that's in the milk, the casein protein, is very important because if it's not A2 protein structure with casein, it can cause a, a gastro, um, gastric in, um, inflammation because it's irritating because A1 confirmation is not appropriate for, uh, for human or dogs. Um, so it will cause some lactose intolerant type of issue. So what it is, is it's, yak, it's cheese that's been hardened. So it's cheese made out of yak milk and cow milk with a little bit of salt for, and lime for pH control and biological control. So it's natural preservatives is what that is. And then they, uh, they make the cheese process. So it curdles and coagulates and does its little cheese stuff, you know, cheese process. And then they slice it and to, uh, to pieces and then they smoke it to drop it down to about 13% moisture to naturally preserve it. So why who I'm a long time raw feeder, why I like them is because, well, they're fermented and been altered by microorganisms, which is the best bioavailable way of, of a carnivore to take in nu you know, nutrition that they would not be able to eat directly. Um, so grass, grain, stuff like that is things that, they, they, that a carnivore would get indirectly through another animal who's, who've taken it and processed it and converted it and fermented it away. So this has been fermented, if, if you will, in a sense. And then uh, they chew on it. So it's hard, but it's not overly hard like a antler or a horn where they're not going to get slab fractures or cracked teeth on it. It's designed to fall apart. So when they chew on it, it crumbles off in little pieces and they play with it. So they'll bounce it from one side of the mouth to another. And as they chew on it, it opens up more surface area. It'll clean the teeth. So, so everything that we do, it has to be 100% real and functional and honest. And this is a product that fits under the rogue brand of way of doing things. Um, what's different about these yak sticks is that we have the safest yak stick in the country right now, being that I quality control check every stick size of every batch. I send it off for uh, AFCO lab for analysis, for quality, for the nutrients to make sure that it is that high protein. It is that high fat because all the other products out there of yaks or chew, Himalayan chews or yak sticks aren't even real yak milk. Milk. They're also cut with potatoes, some of them. And nobody has this high fat content. So it makes you question what's actually in some of those products. It takes a little bit of work to figure it out. But I can look at a package and tell you what's in it. So we have the safest yak stick on the market because, additionally, we test for five biologicals. I'm not required to do this as a company owner of releasing a product. I don't have to test this for quality control. I don't have to test it for biologicals. I'm a scientist. This is what I do and what I do globally for production animals. So it only makes sense to do this for our dogs because – I don't play around when it comes to the safety of our products and to the safety of the dog. It doesn't make sense. It's too, it's too easy to test and to, to check. Just do it. It's a, it's a, it's a good ounce of prevention. So we have the, we have, I think we have the coolest yak stick on the market. We, we're the only ones with this high fat content and the, this quality of a product that's consistent. So 
Uh, it was another product that um, I introduced uh, over this past week on um, on uh, the, in the bully community, the Solo Treats. Uh, Solo Treats is, is a really exciting um, uh, new um, item uh, that we're adding to the line. I wanted to speak on um, the Solo Treats and kind of give us a little background on the Solo Treats. Uh, Matthew, you're good for cleaning teeth, Matthew. That's Matthew in Northern Ireland, yep. a good friend of mine. Yep. And uh, the there was another question about the the it's kind of it's kind of like a power bar. Um, so this is how I use it, right? I have a little border terrier. It takes her about a week to go. Oh wow! You see, well, Val said, "Congrats, Val." Um, Val says, "I have a beautiful American bully female that I bred three times and hasn't taken. She's been on rogue prior to going into heat and just had an ultrasound. She had she is now carrying six puppies." Congrats, Val. Congrats. Good job. Sorry, sorry for cutting you off, Nate. I'm sorry. I oh, was no, just excited no, no. when I saw that. No, I saw that. I wanted to come back to it for sure. But yeah, it's oh, um, cool. turning, you know, if you have reproduction problems and you improve the overall health of the animal. And I think Val only just was doing the origin supplement. Um, I mean, vitamins and minerals do, they help in the sense that if there's a real mineral or vitamin deficiency, but it doesn't improve the total health of the animal. You have to improve the health of the animal to allow their bodies to do what they're designed to do, especially on a female. Females are got a lot going on inside. Um, but nice. for a, like a Clay mentioned, uh, was asking too about the bars. Um, so my border terrier takes a week to go through a large. She travels with me everywhere and she just chews on it throughout the day across the week. Um, I factor that into her diet, her feeding strategy a little bit. Um, I have a big mastiff who will destroy one in an hour. So <laughs> if you have a dog that, that chews it that, that intensely and goes through all of it at once, no big problem. It's all safe. It's not a problem. But depending on your stick, like that large you showed, is 53 grams of protein and 8 grams of fat. That's, in the human world, I'd call that a meal replacement bar. So that's what I do with her. Um, if I give it to her and she's in her, in, in her um, kennel and she just annihilates it, well, great. I'm going to skip a fee, uh, if, depending on how – where we're on a day, I consider that a, a meal. I'll just let her take it and I won't feed her. Uh, I'll skip that meal and just feed her later in the day or feed her the next morning, depending on when I give it to her. So it's functional like that, uh, Clay, that you can use it as, uh, as a, if you will, a meal replacement bar if they destroy it all at one, t one setting. Um, it's a, we have a lot of agility folks and a lot of other people that travel with their dogs a lot and they use it for great distractions uh, while they're traveling. So they kind of chew on it gives them something functional, right? Because if you're going to chew on something, might, might as well give them a little bit of, uh, of good nutrition that they wouldn't get from another source ever again, right? Because when are you going to feed a, a you know, yak milk or a yak cheese to a dog? Well, you will in this product, but it's all about diversity too. So you've got diverse nutrition, quality nutrition. It's functional that it's digestible. It's appropriate for a, a carnivore because it's been fermented and coagulated. It's functional that it... it uh, distract them it's also functional because it helps clean their teeth and i can show you if you if you're at nationals i'll have my border to with me come see me i'll show you the benefit of origins and a yak stick together on how it cleans a mouth i got it, it's a good little it's a good little visual representation of what you can expect with it as well so um let's speak on the solo treats and how that could be beneficial especially within the show ring handlers and just um just a, some background on the solo treats uh, yeah, so I know not everybody gets to talk to me or get to see us that much often, but I've trained and competed dogs the world over for over 15 years. So as a dog trainer in me, I really wanted to develop these treats that way. And I use this, a very special method that's inherent, that's just that we use, uh, cold press pelleting, uh, which I'm an expert in this hemisphere on being able to do that. It's very hard to do it. I can't it would take me a day to explain all the intricacies of how, how, to, how to make that actually happen. So the solo treats are called solo for a reason. I wanted to create the most functional, honest product available. And there's a big problem with contaminants out there and, and things that are hidden in the label. So we call it solo because it is only a single ingredient. There's no binders and there's no synthetics. There's nothing in there other than what we say is in there. And doing so makes that incredibly hard to actually press it tight and make it to hold together. But when you're dealing with 
sensitivities to like rice or, or chicken or other trace things or chemicals like um, some synth very synthetic binders like urea formaldehyde. You know, these are things that you don't want in your dog's body, nor would you take, nor would you eat them yourself. So these solo treats, I can eat them. They are uh, the one that we have out now that we have a little special going on uh, to the end of, uh, into the end of the month, basically Halloween yeah. cuts it off. It's a wild smoked tuna. It is human grade wild tuna and it's just the muscle meat so the phosphate uh the the phosphorus and the ash content super super low so if you have a kidney sensitive dog you're plenty safe with it protein is not going to hurt the kidneys that's scientific fact it ain't going to impact it um but we grind it down after they uh they catch the tuna they take the meat they smoke it they slice it um we actually have them grind it down i get it ground down to the right form uh, the right size so i can press it really tight and then we just run air across it to dry it out a little bit more because we create a little moisture event when we, when we press it. And then it's it. No preservatives. It's naturally preserved the way it is. It's smoked. Um, it's filled uh, nicely with nitrogen. Um, so it preserves it. But it's human grade. If you like jerky and you like tuna, you're going to love these. I eat these all the time when I'm training, when I do focus work, when I want the dog to look at my face. I spit treats when I'm doing focus work. So they look at my face and not my hand uh, and crab at my hand. So – you can eat them. And I, I think that a big part of it, too, is that that should be the bar, right? Um, you're feeding a raw diet. You want the best for your dog, but yet you're giving them some weird mixture of supposed ingredients with other binders and, 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 and consistent modulators in there that keep it soft. And I ask people, would you eat that for yourself? They're like, oh, God, no. I'm like, why do you give it to your dog? These solo treats, you can eat them yourself. There's nothing wrong in them. Your kid could eat them. Um, I eat them all the time. Um, because there's a few left over and I like jerky, <clears throat> so I'm going to eat them um, as well. So that, that should be the limit, right? That's, in my opinion, that should be the bar. If you can't eat the treats you're giving your dog, do you really need to be giving it to your dog or do you know, or do you know what you're putting into your dog? Which is the whole point of, of animal health here, right? Is improving animal health. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So um, we're coming to the end of this. Um, what I want to do is kind of use this time to kind of introduce um, people to people we have throughout throughout the United States um, that carry the product. Um, RogueBullyScience.com is where you can order the product. Um, but, you know, when you do order it through the website, you have to pay for shipping. We have affiliates um, throughout the United States that have product from us that you can reach out to. So I'm going to name a few and I'm going to let Nate name a few. Um, first, Angelo Souther uh, in North Houston, Conroe area has bags of origins, five in one supplement. You can find Angelo on Facebook. He's in the North Houston, Conroe area. Champs Works Pet Supply, which is in Kansas. Um, they have, man, they, you know, they have yak sticks, solo treats, origins five in one, um, can't again, champs works pet supply in Kansas, uh, Mercado's pet supplies in, um, Philly, Philadelphia, um, has origins five in one supplement. Um, let's see who else am I forgetting? Um, uh, Mr. Val Macedo in Cal Cali, California has origins five, five in one supplement. Um, uh, we have, uh, my partner Abel in Chicago has supplement on the ground there. So if you're trying to avoid shipping and you're close to those areas, you can reach out to those. I'm going to let Nate name some, Emmanuel and those guys that are close to the, um, the Texas area and other locations. Yeah. Uh, if you're in the greater Austin area, pretty much go to any store, any local owned store, you're going to find Origins uh, all over the Austin area. Uh, if you're in San Antonio, uh, Rob Roy uh, Pet Resort has it. Also, uh, Eurodog is a agility school in San Antonio on the the central east side of San Antonio. All, all by the Loop has it. Um, if you're in Oklahoma, um, any of the A1 Pet Emporium stores in Oklahoma, both locations for Paltopia in Oklahoma City and in uh, Norman, Oklahoma. Uh, you can go see our boy Sean Mullins over at Bullies Unlimited. Uh, in uh, Oklahoma City. He's in the south end near no uh, Norman as well. And he has another Thor location in Tulsa, Oklahoma as well. And let's see. Uh, oh, um, Adrian Garcia up in uh, Working Dog Supply in Lubbock. If you're in the Lubbock area in the Panhandle, you can go see Adrian, who also has it. He has a great story. Ask him about his dog's transformations on Origins as well. Um, let's see. If you're in, um, if you're in Phoenix... Uh, South Phoenix, they have the, the Pitbull store. 
Um, great guys there. That's a family-owned business. They have it there at the Pitbull store in, in South Phoenix. Um, if you're up in Prescott area of Arizona, um, Kathy Bryan has it as well, who's a, a judge and a competitor in agility. Um, if you're in Utah, you can see uh, Sherry Scott. And there's a whole group up there that have it as well. Um, if you if you want connections to these names, uh, just message us. We'll get you connected with them as well. But we're all we got Utah. If you're in Montana, we have Montana on lock. So uh, Pam Fowl, who was watching, she may still be on here. Billings Canine Coaching. She's an early. She came on very early with the product. So she has it at her, her training school. Uh, Susan Anderson has it at their training school. Sarah Hill uh, up in Montana has it as well. Uh, if you're in Colorado, you can see uh, Jerry Schneid. Um, you can link to uh, just reach out to us and we can get you connected if you're in Colorado. Uh, so if you're uh, around Denver, north of Denver, south of Denver, uh, let us know. We can connect you with the affiliate. Um, either Claudia or Jerry could help you out with that um, as well. Oh, geez. We're, we're actually, um, we just got our first order for the UK. Uh, UK should be, it should be in the UK market, I'll say by the end of November. Um, big announcement coming on that soon. Um, uh, one thing we wanted to mention is um, ABKC Nationals is less than two weeks away. Um, Rogue Bully Science will definitely be there representing really hard. Um, every winner at ABKC Nationals is going to get a five pound bag of Origins five in one supplement. Um, we are, our Rogue Bully Science will be in the same booth location as um, uh, my kennel, Animalville Breeders. Uh, and also we're, we're working on possibly having an informational booth uh, where Nate will be located. And if you guys want to meet Nate, ask some questions, um, he'll have some information for you guys. And also during that weekend, um, Nationals is on November 10th, uh, November 9th, which is uh, the day before Nationals at 3 p.m. Uh, Rogue Bully Science is going to be old, holding a kind of kind of like a, a, a conference meet and greet type of event. Um, we're going to be holding it at um, at a, a hotel, which is close to the venue for ABKC Nationals. It's going to be 3 p.m. Uh, Friday, November 9th, the day before National. We have limited spacing, limited seating right now. Uh, we have available for my calculations about 15 seats still available. Uh, if it's something you want to attend where you get to meet Nate, you get to meet Blake, um, the owners, the people behind it, you learn more about the product. You actually will be able to buy some products right there. And if it's something, uh, if you have a pet store or a business and it's something you're looking to carry in, it's something I would definitely recommend you come and attend. Um, we'll have drinks and, you know, snacks for you guys. Um, again, it's going to be November 9th, the day before Nationals, um, the hotel, Homewood Suites. Um, I, I have the address and information for you, but it's right next to the venue. It will be November 9th, 3 p.m. Uh, we'll make sure we get you guys out by 4 p.m. because I know between 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. is when ABKC is giving you, giving us a chance to come into the venue and set up our booths. So we definitely will have you guys out by 4 p.m. Uh, if you're interested, inbox me. Yep. Hakeem Weimer, uh, I'll put you guys on a list. Like right, like I told you, right now it's limited seating. We already have about 15 people locked in, and we have about 15 to 14 more seats available. So let me know if it's something you guys are interested in and want to be a part of. Yeah, we'll go. Anything you want to say? Yeah, we'll go over a lot of information. I'll get some. Uh, you'll be able to see the early insight to all of the data that we have on the supplement about how much we actually impact the dog. But we also get the a good Q and A session. We're gonna have a mix of people there that have been uh, some users, some new users. Um, we have some, uh, we're looking for more store people as well. So it's a good chance to, to get to know us a little bit more and, and, and learn a little bit more as well. Cool, cool. Uh, if, uh, what's up, Ken, how you doing? Uh, Ken says, very pleased with Rogue Bully Science Origins. Feeding has cut in half. Stuffs is better than ever. Again, very pleased. I uh, appreciate it, Ken. Ken. Ken, man, I want to show Ken some love. Ken was one of the first people when Rogue Bully Science was introduced to the bully community. He helped us spread the word and get the word out there. I really appreciate you, Ken. Hopefully you can meet, make the conference November 9th, 3 p.m. at our Homewood Suites, a hotel right next to the venue, right before ABKC Nationals. Let me know if you can make it. But uh, that's about it for today. Um, hopefully, you know, you guys learned. Um, I learn every day I talk to Nate. So, you know, hopefully you guys learned some stuff today. And um, again, just to show you guys Rogue Bully Science, Rogue Pet Science, Origins 5-in-1, Yak Sticks, Solo Treats. This is the real deal. 
Um, it's research, knowledge behind this. This is not something Nate just went and made up in his backyard. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, we, 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 we owe to do dogs to do better. We owe to our dogs to do better, and th there needed to be done uh, things done differently. So um, we answered that call. So that's our mission. I appreciate you guys checking in. Thanks, Nate, and I'll hit you later. You guys have a nice day. Bye.